Greetings RC friends, welcome to Props and Wheels. After crashing my WL Toys V912 helicopter, 4 channel helicopter outdoors, due to the overconfidence and stupidity, I am punishing myself by reviewing 2 channel, 3 channel and 4 channel toy grade helicopters for a while. And here is the review of another 3 channel helicopter. This is SEMA S109. I found this through Facebook marketplace and the seller was local and I got it for $15. It is slightly used but it seemed to be in good condition. SEMA is one of the better toy grade helicopter brands. So I'm assuming that I'm going to have a good experience with this one. Now this is a 3 channel helicopter but it has a gyro in it to stabilize. Unfortunately the transmitter is infrared so it is not 2.4 gigahertz radio waves. It is using infrared light. So usually you can only fly this indoors, if you need to fly it outdoors there shouldn't be any sunlight because sunlight has a lot of infrared radiation and it will interfere with the controls. You can probably fly it in the dusk in the afternoon or evening and you have to make sure there is not much wind because these 3 channel helicopters do not do well in the wind. So let's open it up and see if it is a good deal or not. So here it is. It is a very nice looking helicopter actually. It has a lot of scale details and I like it. I mean look at, look at it. It's all green and it has the decals on the sides. Very nicely executed in my opinion. Of course it's plastic and it is toy grade but for $15 hey. What do you expect? And here is the infrared transmitter. So here are the infrared LEDs that send a signal, a light signal, to a detector that's in this case at the nose of the helicopter. So usually these are pretty good when it's in the air picking up the signal around 360 degrees but if you get something in between like furniture or someone walking between the transmitter and the helicopter. Usually they fall out of the sky and some of them are programmed to you know, slowly decrease the power to land. But in this case I'm assuming it's just going to fall off the sky because it's a very simple one. And here we have the charging cable with the, which goes to a USB adapter. And in this case we only have the tail rotor blade as a spare. And then we have this very short bifold instruction manual but the English is all good and they also included a spare part list. So this is one thing that if you are planning to repair the helicopter after having crashes and broken parts you want a brand that provides these kind of spare parts that you can buy. And SEMA is one of them. Okay, so here is a one issue I didn't realize before but <laughs> as you see the stick is broken on this one. This issue was not listed but I can get away probably with it by <laughs> just using my thumb like that. It's not a big deal. Um, this, the right hand stick is good so this is for yaw meaning that rotation. This is a 3 channel helicopter and this is for going forward and backward which is done by this little motor and rotor blade on the back to pushing the tail up and down. And then this is the third channel which is the throttle. You go up and down to hover it at an altitude. And then here is the trim wheel and it has the AB switch. This is for switching between two channels. If you have like two of these, one will fly on A, the other one will fly on B without interfering with each other. These are fake buttons so they don't do anything. So that's it. One concern I have with this helicopter is since it's used the battery may not be at its prime anymore. So I'm just wondering how much flight time I'm going to get. And hopefully it won't be dead and it will have some juice. It takes 6 AA batteries. And I think the reason is because it also has a charging cable over here on the side. So if you are away on the field for example in the evening and you want to charge it there you can just connect it directly from the transmitter to the charging port on the helicopter. And moment of truth for the battery the little on off switch is on the right hand side. Okay 
The LED lights turned on, that's a good sign. Let's put this on our helipad. Let's turn on the transmitter and go. Oh, it's already connected. Okay, I didn't have to go up and down with the throttle on this one. And let's see how I'm going to fare with this broken throttle stick. Okay, this is full throttle. <laughs> ah. Yeah, unfortunately, the battery needs to be replaced. And uh, the good thing is, there's a little battery hatch that I can open up and see what battery it uses. So let's do that. This is actually a replaceable battery because it is not soldered into the board. So it has a little, one of these uh, tiny little micro connectors, as you see here. I don't know if you can see it because it needs to, my camera needs to focus, but as you see, and it's all puffed up. So this is a bad battery. And it is 150 milliamp hour battery. So here is my MiG-320 Microjet from Zian Toys and I think it has a very similar battery. Let's check it out. I just flew this actually yesterday and it, I, I was checking the battery. It should be, yes, it is 150 milliamp hour battery as you can see here. And I believe the connector is also the same and of the same polarity. If I put it side by side, is it the same polarity? No, it is not. I, I, I cannot believe this. Well, hopefully the second time is the charm. Here is my Ishin E012 micro drone and it has a battery with the same connector and the polarity is the same. So I can actually test this out. Okay, I think we are in business. Attempt number two with the new battery. Oh yes. This is working out well. It just needs a little bit of a uh, right trim, yaw trim. And it somehow it is, is it stable? Yeah, it's quite stable actually, right now. And the trimming is uh, very analog, but you can adjust it on the go. You just have to be careful. And this is a full yaw rate to the right and to the left, but it is very stable. And those lights are telling me that actually I may be able to fly it on a calm night because it will make orientation easy. The only problem is it doesn't have any lights on the tail. Let me get it a little closer. It's a very gentle flying helicopter. For a toy grade helicopter, it's really good. Let me get it back into the camera's view. It's a little difficult to keep a three-channel helicopter in the same location for a very any amount of time. If it drifts side to side, you cannot really do anything. You just have to turn to that side it's drifting from and then go forward to keep it. But it is a very nice looking helicopter. It's a great scale on this one. Definitely great scale. And it's the control has been really good, although it's infrared. You now, so far I haven't had any issues. Let's go a little farther away. Oh, okay. The, I'm, I'm full throttle now. Let's see if I can make it to the... Oh, I didn't quite make it. Yep, so uh, I didn't fully charge, so that battery from the drone wasn't fully charged. Whatever charge it had, I used it up. At this point, I don't need to fly it anymore. What I'm planning to do is charge the battery again and if the weather permits tonight, 
with low winds and no rain, I'm going to attempt a flight outdoors and I'll put it right after this. It has been so windy and so breezy lately, but I want to try it out anyway. So it is quite dark. I hope you can see anything. And this uh, little helicopter is ready to fly. We have a wind coming from about uh, six, seven miles per hour from north. But I'm going to attempt it anyway. Hey, what the heck? I promised the evening flight. So let's get started. So everything is ready. I'm going to do a hand launch. Oh, okay, something. So I don't know why, but here we go. Oh, it's all flying away. Okay, okay. Full forward, full forward. It's going to the wrong direction. <laughs> to the neighbor's house. Uh... All right, I'm following it. This is full forward. And <laughs> all right, it is resisting the wind. As you can see, I'm now going into the middle of the street. <laughs> And it is flying and it is, I think there's a car coming now. And this, as you can see, it's, I, I full forward and, and it's still going away. All right, I'm going to cut it. So I think that's enough. Yes, it can fly in the evening. <laughs> it, won't, it won't fly in the high breeze, but uh, I think this is okay. It was able to at least uh, hold its own and didn't go too far. Let's do another one. Yeah, no problem. It is flying. As long as there's not too much breeze, it is uh, flying. Now the wind has changed. It's a little turbulent here around the house, so, but it is flying. As you can see, getting tossed around a little bit but it is flying and I think I'm ready to give a final verdict on this so I was looking online to see how much these cost and at Amazon it is right now 43 44 dollars and plus you know although there's free shipping you'll pay tax of about 45 I will never pay 45 dollars for something like this a three channel toy helicopter don't do it don't buy it for 45 dollars because for $45, you can buy a much better four-channel helicopters. I also found on Banggood, as well as on AliExpress, on Banggood, it is selling for, I think, $33. With the shipping, it will be close to $40. And the cheapest is on AliExpress, which you can get for about $30 in free shipping, but then you have to wait a couple weeks and even a couple months for it to arrive, because it will be coming from China. If you find it, on eBay or Facebook Marketplace, used in good condition, it is worth $15, I think, as long as the battery is actually working. Because otherwise, you'll have to replace it. So it's extra effort, extra expense. So I'm planning to replace this battery, and I think I can find it for $2, $3, but again, it's going to take the price up. If you like the scale looks, and if you are good with toy helicopters, for $15, this is recommended. If you are planning to get into the hobby, I never recommend three-channel helicopters for you. You know, pay a little bit more, get a proper four-channel helicopter with the correct controls, yaw on the left and the bank on the right. So, with that said, this is good for what it is. If you are buying a toy to the kid and you, want, you don't want to pay more than $20 and you find it less than $20, it is nice, it's a nice looking helicopter. Sima is a good toy brand, so it is recommended. Okay, so tomorrow we have another three channel helicopter review coming, please stay tuned. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments, any requests, special requests, leave them below. Stay safe and healthy. Hope to see you on the next video, bye bye.